Hey, yo, Bunky. You see this? And they standing on top of the sink looking in the, in the vent. I don't know. You can't stick nothing in the vent. Why they calling my name? Williams. Hey, what's up, man? Y'all found my knife? What knife? In the vent? It's not my knife. Because if it was my knife, you wouldn't have found it. I ain't got no knife. Why would I have a knife? Because I'm in prison. Hmm, that's a valid point. It's not my knife. I'm going to the hole for it. Let me see. That's a piece of metal. It's not even sharp. That's not mine, man. I ain't never seen that in my life. There's no way I can get inside that vent. I seen what you just went through to get whatever that is out. There's no way I could do what you just did to get that out. I'm going to the hole for it. Man, you're tripping. That's not mine. Oh, you're going to fingerprint it. You're going to fingerprint that dusty-ass piece of metal. You see how much dust is on that? There's no possible way that's mine. I'm going to hole for it. I'm not going to hole for it. It ain't a knife. It's a piece of metal. Yeah, it's a piece of metal. It's not mine. Man, that shit could have been in that vent for 20 years, man. When's the last time y'all checked that vent? I know I've been in this cell for years, but that's not mine. Well, you do what you got to do. I'm not going to hold for that knife. That's what I hate about these shakedowns, man. Y'all just want to blame something on somebody. I told you, if it was mine, you wouldn't have found it. Because you ain't found mine. Hey, two knives in the cell. You ain't found nothing. You're trying to blame me for that piece of metal. What? I ain't say nothing. You got to be the dumbest motherfucker. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Shakedowns. One of the most stressful times while being locked up. You think of a lot of things when you think of being incarcerated. But unless you've been incarcerated, you don't know the anxiety, the feelings, the emotions, the, the terror... The different things that can come with shakedown. Here you are in this cell. You have no clue that these people are down the hallway putting on gloves. Strapping up, getting their flashlights, their trash bags, ready to shine something on you. Come in there and mess your whole world up. Here you sit. You might have wine in the cell. Here you sit with all your tattoo stuff right underneath your mattress. A knife underneath your pillow. Stuff that's been stolen from other inmates and you're putting new names on it. So you can resell it. You might fix things for people. Now you got their TV in your cell, their fan, the CD player, whatever it is. Here comes these guards. The doors are locked. You are caught red-handed with all this stuff. Now they're going to pack you up, send you to the hole. You're going to spend more time in prison. You're going to lose everything that they find. So when you come out the hole, now you're responsible for these other inmates' items that got taken during that shakedown. Oh, yeah, you got to pay. Just because the guards took it don't mean they're going to take a loss. You're going to take the loss. Wasn't 15 minutes ago you was laying there, everything was good. You was off in la-la land, dreaming of not being in prison, dreaming that your dumb ass hadn't ended up locked up. Then you hear that whistle blow. Shake down. You start seeing lights pop on. You're looking over at other cells, you see dudes in there scrambling, trying to get everything in order, hide everything they can at the last moment because these people are here and they're coming. That's what we're on now today. This is Shakedown Edition. I've been through hundreds of shakedowns. Being the tattoo guy, getting shook down was just, uh, it, was, it was part of the game, part of the routine. You knew it was coming. So you knew to stay ready. What happens in those moments when you're not ready? When you didn't know they were coming? <laughs> That's what we own now. Getting shook down there in prison. Caught lacking. You know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So, let's relive it. Real quick before we get into today's video. It's snowing its ass off. You see this? Just yesterday it was like beach weather. It was in the 60s. Now it's snowing. 
Also, hope everybody had a good holiday. Hope everybody had a good New Year's Eve. And that if you did things wrong in 2021, you learn from them and that you do better in 2022. I can't complain much about 2021. I'm here. I'm alive. It could always be worse. It was much worse for someone else. And I always try to take that into consideration before I start looking at my situation. With that being said, let's get into the shakedown stuff. What is a shakedown? We must break that down first. Break it down. Get into the science of it. For you to understand. For you that have not been there. Shakedown is the act of them coming in your cell. Tearing your cell apart. And looking for things you shouldn't have. Now we have different shakedowns. We have random shakedowns. We have certain shifts on. I remember that you would see certain guards come in. And you'd be like, oh man. These are just the people that in their real lives, they stare out the blinds all day at what's going on in the neighborhood. The nosy people. Well, now they've been given a job that says, hey, you can go up in cells and look through people's stuff whenever you want. And if you find something, yay, you did a good job. Now write them up for it. You got those shakedowns. Then you got random shakedowns where they just, sergeant tells them, hey, I need 10 cells shook down today. You hope you don't get caught on that list, but they're just going to come in and randomly hit two cells, 10 cells, five cells, whatever they decide to do that day. There are things that can help you stay off that list. One, not fighting with the officers, not giving them no problems, not being somebody that argues with them. When they come by your door and tell you to do something, just say, all right, I got you. Don't be that dude. Man, you can suck my, oh, honk. You don't... no, don't do all that. Yeah, I got you. Keep it moving. That's going to help you avoid when they come in, you getting targeted. That guy that called him a sissy, a guy that talked about his kids and his wife and, and said all these crazy things. Oh, you know they're going up in his cell. They got permission to shake down and turn his cell apart. Then you have what we call annual shakedowns. Twice a year, they put the whole compound on lock. A full week, nothing moves. Nobody comes out their cell. You come out every three days, one cell at a time to take a shower. There will be no phone. There will be nothing else. They will let you go get in the shower for five minutes of some cold water and rinse your dusty ass off. That annual shakedown is the most stressful shakedown there is. Because you, you're in your cell. There's nobody walking around outside your cell as you're locked in. That you can be like, hey, come out door real quick and pass something off to them. There's no way to have somebody else take something to move it for you. Everybody's in the same boat at this point. There's a lot of different things they look for during these shakedowns. Number one, being weapons, drugs, wine. Number two, being contraband, things we've made. You'd be surprised. We make shells. We make things to hold CDs. We make things to hold our cosmetics. Cardboard shells on the walls. We make things to cover the lights. We alter our sweatpants, turn them into sweatshorts. Take shirts, cut the sleeves off. Take thermals and turn them into wife beaters. That's all contraband. They're looking for stolen property. Somebody's TV got stole last week. Made its way back into population. The guy's name is engraved in it. His name's, somebody's taking a razor and scraped his name off. Waxed it real good with floor wax. Now the plastic looks brand new. Right if it's somebody with a tattoo gun to nyeh, 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 put your name on it, they're coming in checking the names on everything in the cell. The CD player to the Norelco beard trimmers to the adapters that plug in the wall, the surge protectors, the TVs. All these things have your names on it. Then they're just looking for overstock, oversupplies. You're only allowed to have two rolls of toilet paper. You've been saving up. You got 10 rolls of toilet paper. They're taking eight. You got three shirts, three pair of socks, three boxes, three pair of jeans. Anything over that? They're taking it. When you see them come in, even though you're already locked up, you would think, what's it matter? I'm already locked up. Anybody that says your heart don't skip a beat is lying to you. Now, there's usually some type of warning that this is coming. The guys that work in the child halls, the guys that work on the loading docks, they'll come back and let you know. And the only way we usually know is if, say, a guard is talking about it to another guard, 
and an inmate out there mopping the halls or emptying trash cans. He's got one of these, believe it or not, this is a good job to have is emptying them trash cans and mopping them halls. He's got one of these positions where he hears things. Comes back, hey man, heard the guards talking earlier. Monday we're going on lock. Yeah, he asked the other guard, hey, you ready for the shakedown? Oh yeah, man, I'm trying. I'm writing everybody up. Oh yeah, dude, let's talk about my kids. Yeah, man, that's yeah, he's going down. Then the styrofoam trays. With us being on lock, there's no chow hall. We're not going to eat in the chow hall. Now, when you go to a restaurant, you say, hey, can I get this to go? And they bring you a little styrofoam box. That's what your meals come in. So the dudes that work on the dock, they unload the, you know, tractor trailers with whatever comes in for the prison. Friday, they just unloaded 20,000 styrofoam trays. Hmm. Why would we need 20,000 styrofoam trays unless we're going on a lock? He comes back. Hey, the trays just came in. People start scrambling. It's good when that happens. It gives you a little leeway, a little bit of warning. You don't always get warning. They got hip to that. Hey, don't bring the trays until Sunday night. Have the officers unload the tractor trailers. Don't let the inmates see the trays. Monday morning rolls around, and at 3, 3.30 in the morning, the guys that work in the chow hall leave the pods and head over to the chow hall to start prepping food for 6, 6.30 when guys start eating. The first sign that we're on shakedown is 3, 3.30 that morning, these guys that wear these all white scrubs, like it looks like a hospital scrubs, get up, brush the funk off their teeth, Hopefully they brush the funk off their tongue. Wash your face. Put the deodorant on. Do what you're going to do for the day. You pop your door. You come out. You sit in the middle of the pod at a chair. Wait. And then they open the front door. And you head over to the chow hall. And you start making breakfast for everybody. First sign we're on shakedown is. Those guys' doors don't pop. Hmm. They didn't go to work. Who's making the food? Hmm. Officers are making the food. Won't be long after that. They'll come in that morning. They'll feed. Everybody will be locked in a cell. They come around with the car pushing them. And they hand out two trays to each cell. Little bag of milk. Little bag of juice. I mean, while we on lock, shake down. Annual shake down. And they keep it moving. Shortly after breakfast, they come through, collect all the trays. And then all hell breaks loose. Sitting there watching TV. If you're smart. You know, throwing anything out the cell that you don't want to get caught with. Anything you can't hide. Everything else, you've bammered. Bama means hidden. Put it in the bama. The bama is the, the secret hiding spot, the bat cave. Wherever you hide stuff in the cell, in the cell, it goes in there. Then you got some of the dudes that uh hide stuff, but they don't hide it in the cell. They put it in other you get where I'm going with this. After that child's time is served, you're sitting there and you hear their front door slang open. And these gates are so loud, you would think over the years they'd have figured out a way to make them quiet. Because the gate to a convict, you learn to hear things. You can't see as much. You don't have a way to do other things. So certain senses are heightened, like your sound. You start to pick up on, if you hear keys, there's a guard in here. I just heard some keys jingle, and nobody else got no keys. You get to looking around. Footsteps in the middle of the night, the skirt of a sneaker, the static from a walkie-talkie. All these things let you know that there's an officer here to stop what you're doing. But that gate, that front gate, that front door, shine, slides open and rocks a little bit. You get up, you go look out your cell door, and in comes 25 officers. They got canine dogs with them. They got this x-ray machine that they run your mats through. They run your pillows through. They got this other machine we call the butt chair that you go sit on. X-rays your organs. X-rays your insides. Then they got a section up top where you lay your face and the x-rays inside of your mouth to make sure you ain't got nothing inside of you. Now they start at cell one. 20 officers. Two officers go to every cell. You step to the door. Strip down butt naked. Got another man in the cell with you. Your celly, unless he's a 
and uh, likes to try to peek at you. You know, they be telling you, hey, strip down naked. Face us, take your clothes off. Got your celly behind you like this. Damn, shawty fat. Some dudes like that. But most real dudes, you step to the door. Hey, step to the door, strip naked. You go to the door, take everything off. Hand me your boxes. Hand me your shirt. You give them the box. You give them the shirt. Put that on. Step back. You step back. Your celly steps up. Same routine. They open the cell, you step out the cell, they put you in handcuffs, they go in, they get your mat, your pillow, and they x-ray them first, take a marker and write your cell number on it, so they know it came out that cell, no matter, because it might have came from another cell, now they're going to mark that number out, write the new cell number on it, they scan it, then they go in. Oh, do they go in. They go through every piece of mail. They're crawling under your bunk. To the place that you ain't clean where the dust bunnies are and the dirt is and the old toenails are falling and they're up under there squirming, searching. They're looking inside shampoo bottles and toothpaste. And I don't care how tidy you keep yourself. I don't care who you are. They're going to find something. Oh, got three washcloths. Ha, got him. Got an extra washcloth. Write him up for contraband. Man, did you really just write me up? I gotta stay in prison longer because of a damn washcloth. Hey, to cut his sheet. Must be making a rope or something or a clothesline. Structure the state property, write his ass up. I, I, that sheet came from laundry like that. Don't matter, you got caught with it. You're getting rolled up. And they go cell by cell by cell. When they're done with your cell, and you're done, you're done, had your butt x rayed, then had your face x rayed, you go back in your cell. You. Your celly stuff, it's all mixed together. Y'all's family photos are laying on the floor, boot prints on them, all your personal letters, holiday cards, your clothing, your cosmetics, your personal items, your commissary, it's all mixed together. The cellars looks like a Tasmanian devil with a tornado flying out of its ass has then come through the cell. Now you got to spend the next few hours fixing everything. You got to sit out there and watch them do this, praying they didn't find what you had hidden. That knife that's in that cell, it's going to get you sent away. It's going to get you sent eight, nine hours from where you're currently at. To where you might have been 30, 45 minutes from where your people live. Mama lives 45 minutes in that direction. If you're lucky, your people live 20 minutes in that direction. Oh, you just got caught with a knife. Now you're going eight and a half, nine hours away up to where we call the mountains. Because that's where they stick the supermaxes, up on the mountains. Because if you escape, where are you going to go? Down the side of a mountain, you're going to get eaten by the wildlife. You're going to fall and break a bone. And if they fly a helicopter over top of there with their infrared, their night vision, they're going to spot you. Being sent nine hours away is a bad thing. You might have got to visit every single weekend when your people live 30 minutes away. Now you're nine hours away. Who in the hell is coming to see your country ass nine hours away in Big Stone Gap, Virginia? Not many. Jacob Aquino by far was one of my favorite cellmates. He didn't buckle under pressure. He had a 36 year sentence to do. At this point, he was about eight, nine years into it. He was seasoned, he was a convict. His heart didn't pump Kool-Aid. He wasn't scared of those guards. There's nothing they could do to him that hadn't been done to him already. Now, they shook the, cell, the whole entire pod to, next door to us down. That's 43 cells. That's 86 men. Now, they've come in and shook the top cell, uh, tear down over here. That's 22 cells. That's 44 men. They spent all day shaking down, scanning mats, checking peckers, looking at butts, crawling in the toenail spaces, Going through envelopes, the guards are tired. We're waiting. He's standing by the toilet with the razor, ready to cut this bag, ready to dump all this wine right down the toilet. And these are shaving razors. So he's gonna take the, the razor, cut this bag in the slits, throw it in the toilet, and flush it. We see them, they leave out. Now we know they're done for the day because they do little things that as convicts lets us know they're done. They take the x-ray machines with them. They take the canines out. They take all these things in that they were gonna use out. And they come back in now, it's, it's dinner time. 
They start feeding trays. Great. That means they won't be back until tomorrow. Damn. We got another day. Half day in a cell with this wine. What are we going to do? As soon as they get up out of here and, and the night shift comes on, we're going to start drinking. Jay, we can't drink five gallons of wine. Well, I, shit, we can drink a lot. Might not be able to drink five gallons, but hey, we can drink all we want. The rest is going in the toilet. Bang on the wall. Get the dudes that live in the cell next to me. Hey, come to the door. What's up? Come to the door. Old boy comes to the door. What's up? Y'all feel like drinking? You got some wine over there? Now, do you feel like drinking? Hell yeah. I'm going to send y'all some wine over. Send me your cups. They send over their cups. Two tumblers apiece. Boom. I fill the cups up. Here. Stick them outside the door. Take this. Here. Take this. Put it in something and come back to me. We got a little trash can in our cell that everybody keeps clean. You can eat out this thing because we put sodas in it, other things in it. That trash can is more or less a cooler. Nobody uses it for trash. Pour that in your trash can and bring your cups back. We do this until the point that I've given them about maybe two gallons of wine they've got in this trash can and sitting in random cups on the counter now. That next door getting lit. Me and Jacob in the cell, we got all night now. We got to at least about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning before they come back in. We start barking. At first, we're drinking fast, guzzling whole cups of wine. Prison wine is some of the nastiest shit you will ever drink. I've tasted some wine that tasted decent. I've tasted some wine that I guess you could say if you were locked up was good. But if you were to bottle it up, put it on a shelf at any store in America, people would be breaking that shit in the house, writing the company. It would be banned. It's terrible. It's nasty. It's not filtered the way it should. It's bad for your kidneys. You shouldn't be drinking it. But hey, we're locked up. Doing the cell next to me comes the door. Hey, this shit is a missile, Jay. Missile means it's good. Bro, we lit over here, making all this noise now, right? Y'all drinking? Now, you already know we drinking. We're in the cell. We're guzzling. We go through the first gallon, no problem. The second gallon, and you get eight cups to a gallon. A second gallon, whew, done thrown up two, three times, burping this stuff up. Ugh. The cell smells like it. My hands stink like it from straining it through these hair nets. We work our way through the second gallon. Ask dudes next door, y'all want some more? Yeah, yeah, send it over, send it over. Send they cups back over. Hey, I'm going to send y'all four cups. Send four cups out the door. Now all we got to do is make four cups disappear. We stomach it. We buck these last four cups. Take the bag, cut the bag up in slits. Flush it down the toilet. Now all the evidence of the wine is gone. That next morning, they come through with the trays. I sit up on my bed and I feel like I've been hit by a Mack truck. Wine will give you the worst hangover in the world. Liquor, beer, all the other stuff. Nothing compares to the hangover that comes with wine. Even if you ain't never been locked up and you just decided you wanted to drink three bottles of wine one night, you know when you woke up the next morning, you were like, oh, you feel terrible. They bring us our trays. Twin says, Jay, grab my tray, man. I get up. I go to the door. I get both trays. I sit them down. I don't feel so good. Blah, I start projectile vomiting into the toilet. He gets down, starts throwing up in the toilet. Now we got to clean up in here. We done spilt wine throughout the night being reckless. Here they come. In with the canines. In with the butt machine. In with the x-ray. The x-ray to mats. We're in cell 20. So we got 19 cells before they get to us. I think of like 20 officers. So as soon as they come in, boom, they start at cell 1. They're already at cell 10. By the time they finish up there, they're down our stream. They get to our cell and he comes in. Oh boy, he's been drinking. Nobody been drinking. I am hung over. My eyes are bloodshot red, puffy. I look like I ain't slept in a week. Jacob's eyes are bloodshot red, puffy. He looks just like me. We've done our best to clean up the evidence of the wine and the fact that we strained five gallons of fruit from the wine in the middle of the night. Standing there hungover. Step to a door, strip down, butt naked, give us your clothes. Jacob turns and faces the wall. That's what you do. You turn your back to the other man's back because you don't want to be looking at him. They shake, they shake my clothes, hand them back. Step out. I step out to sell their handcuff. He comes to the door, strip down naked. Strips down naked. They check his clothes, put them on, and we step out. 
He's standing there and we're both leaning against the wall. I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and we're just. Uh, they go in. They find that little bit of shit the whole time. They smell the wine. So they're tearing the cell apart. They're taking shampoo. Does it smell like wine to you? Stupid ass guards. Does smell a little bit like wine. Man, that's VO5. Dump it in the sink. They dump it out. Yep, that's shampoo. Man, y'all owe me some more shampoo. Get it from the rough. We ain't give you no more shampoo. We beat them. We got through them. They shook us down. They didn't find nothing. We went back in the cell and slept for the next two days. Sick. I watched a lot of guys on that shakedown, though, that weren't ready, that thought they were slicker than the guards, that tried to hide things, go to the hole. I watched them come out of other guys' cells with wine. How did you let them catch you with five gallons of wine and the toilet works? Did you not think they were going to find the five-gallon bag with fruit floating in it in your cell? You got to be the stupidest mother you already know. Let's get into the next. Details this morning after contraband, including weapons and drugs, were found during a shakedown at the Hines County Detention Center in Raymond. Contraband, drugs, cell phones, and shanks were all discovered during the search. It comes just days after inmate Michael Richardson was found unresponsive in pod A of the Raymond Detention Center. Interim Sheriff Chrysler says he will give an update on this situation during a press conference later on today. Oh, that's a bad day. That's a real, mama, they got me. Man, the boys had a hacksaw blade. You shouldn't have got called a hacksaw blade. You should have put that to work immediately. Crazy enough, I don't think there was anything on the table I haven't seen before. With my job working maintenance, it's a no-brainer. I worked with tools, grinders, metal, angle iron, metal rods, you name it. I came across it. Lawnmower blades. You can go ahead and use your imagination. So there was a point in my bid where I was that guy that uh could get you what you needed. Now I knew in giving you this that you were going to harm another inmate with it. Or possibly get caught with it. But that's going to happen either way. I know you might say, Jay, you were help. It's going to happen either way. You think them knives I passed out were the only knives in prison? No. We get shook down one time, and this was not a major shakedown. This was just a random somebody had told on me because they thought I was making knives. Shakedown. We have a vent on the wall that's supposed to blow air. And to this day, I don't know why that vent was there. Maybe they put those vents there with the intentions of putting AC in or putting heat in, but that vent didn't blow anything. That vent was full of dust it had a security grate over it you, if you put something in it it was lost you couldn't get it out you couldn't see in it because you didn't have a flashlight it was useless middle of the night maybe about 4 4 15 somewhere around 5 because i hadn't done count yet right on my cell door with the walkie talkie I wake up look over the shining light on williams lights on feet on the floor Shake down. My cellie uncovers his head, looks out. I'm like, oh shit. I've got two knives in my cell. My knives are hidden very well. I can get to them in a moment's notice. But these guards, they're not going to find them. I'm not worried about them finding them. What's going on, man? Go ahead and step out the cell. For what? You don't know what shakedown means? How long you been locked up? All right. I step down. Put on my shower shoes. Go to put on a shirt. Now, I don't put nothing on, no touch nothing. I'm in my boxes. Step out in your boxes. I step out the cell. Black dude and the white dude, Deputy Doofy. They go in there and they start. They take our mats. They're looking to see if it's been sewn up. Any tears. They're going under my mat. They're looking under my bunk. They're under my counter. They find my stinger I heat water up with. Congrats. You need to get a trophy. You should be promoted immediately. You found a stinger. This one guard acted, oh, I got the stinger. I got a stinger. It's an electrical cord. So what? Meanwhile, I'm still standing there trying to wake up. I'm looking in the cell as they're shaking down, and I'm being nosy. They're going through everything. What are y'all looking for, man? Why are y'all in my cell? They find some tattoo patterns. 
but no tattoo gun. No ink. Oh, we got tattoo patterns. Those are drawings. These are tattoo patterns. How can you prove they're tattoo patterns? They're inked on the back. I trace them. You can get a tattoo on charge. Maybe if you find a gun, but they're not going to find a gun. They continue to search. They continue to search. They continue to search. They are looking in places. I've never had officers look before. These dudes are doing the most. This one officer's way bigger than a little cubby hole underneath the bed, but he's just squirmed his big sloppy body ass right up in there. And then I watched him trying to squirm his butt crack hanging out, trying to get back out. His utility belts clinking on stuff. Finally, he makes it out. He don't find nothing. They're getting ready to leave out, and I can tell that because they're standing there and they're looking around at anything else they haven't messed with yet, and they're scanning the room. They're searching, and the officer looks up at the vent. Steps on the toilet, steps up on the sink, tells the other officer, let me see your light. Clicks his light on, shines it in there. Oh, yeah, we got something. We got something. Hey, go get the little rod. He goes and comes back with this little metal rod with a hook on the end of it, a little handle. The other guard does, brings it to him. He's standing on the sink and he puts it in the vent and he's pulling and moving it around. And I watch him pull and he pulls out a piece of metal about this long. It's a little round thing. I don't know what the hell this thing was. I, even working maintenance, I'd never seen whatever it was he just took out of my vent. Pulls it out. Got him. Got who? I watched him pull it out the vent. I said, that's not mine. Oh, it's yours. We got you. Man, that's not mine. It was in your vent. Look, man, y'all are going to take a log of everything y'all just shook down when you left out of here, right? Uh-huh. All right, then you need to look back through the logs and see when the last time that vent was checked. Because I've been in here for a long time, and they ain't never looked in that vent. Do you see how much trouble you went through to get that out that vent? If you had to go get a special tool to get it out, through, well, you guys are creative. You've got a way to get it out. Obviously, I don't, or it wouldn't have been where you can find it. I've been doing this a long time. I'm not going to put nothing in a place like that for you to find it. Well, this is a weapon. I said it's not even sharp. Whatever you got right there is dull. Just like it was broke off something. You're not about to charge me with nothing, right? Oh, you, you're getting a charge. You're going to the hole. This is a weapon. It just hadn't been sharpened yet, but it's a, a, a weapon that's going to be manufactured into a poker, into a shank. Got your ass. You're going up out of here, Williams. Well, here's the first thing I'm thinking. Why do y'all keep addressing me? I got a cellmate also. Y'all ain't said nothing to him. So I don't know if my cellmate sent him at me, but he never said a word to this man, right? He just stand there. It's not mine. Turn around and be cuffed up. I say, this is about a bitch. I argue with these people. It's good five minutes, man. Are you stupid or something? The thing is covered in dust, lint, old dead skin that's floating in the air. The thing has been in there, obviously, for years. It's not mine. Be cuffed up. I turn around, and they cuff me up. Lead me up to the third floor where the sergeant sits. I'm still half asleep at this point. Eyes are still adjusting to the bright lights. I'm in my boxes and a pair of shower shoes. Cold. Sitting in this plastic chair. Sergeant's at his desk looking at me. He's looking down at this piece of metal. What is this, Williams? I said, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? They found it in your cell. They didn't find that in my cell. They found that in the vent. The vent's part of your cell. I said, look, man, that thing is covered in dust. How many times have I been in your office? How many times have I been in the hole? Do you really think that if it was mine, I would have put it there and they could have found it? You don't really say anything. Protocol states it was found in your cell. You're the one to be charged with it. I said, do you really think it's mine? Use your brain for a minute. Don't just go by protocol. Does that really look like something that's just got put there or something that's been there a very, very long time? I said, if you want to lock me up, put me in the hole behind it, I'm going to push paperwork on the fact that I want to see the last time that vent was searched. Show me the log that shows the last time that vent was searched. Show me a log stating that that vent was searched prior to me moving in that cell. He sits there for a couple minutes. I used to hate when the sergeants of them wouldn't say anything. And they just go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and nod their head. Mm-hmm, what, bitch? Mm-hmm, what? After about 20 minutes of him not saying anything, he's picking it up and looking at it. He says, I don't even know what this is. I said, me neither. You know how I work, man. I ain't never seen that in my life. And I don't know what that is. I said, you better 
believe that if I had a knife, it would be sharp. I wouldn't get caught with a piece of metal that wasn't sharpened. Because if something should happen and I need a knife, what the hell am I going to do with that? Hold on, homeboy. Hey, time out. Timesies. I got to go sharp my knife real quick. Don't kill me. I'll be back in about two, three days once I get this thing sharp. And then we'll continue this beef. Cool? All right. Good luck, homeboy. That don't even make sense, man. It would already been sharpened. He says that a little bit long. It says, tells the officer in the hallway, tells him to come back in. Officer comes back in. He says, uncuff him. What, what do you mean, uncuff him? Garvis, man. Deputy Doofy, which is, he just knew I was caught right handed. I should be going to the hole. What do you mean, uncuff him? Uncuff the man and send him back to his cell. Why? Like, do you really want to argue with me? You're just a peon. I'm the sergeant. You really want to argue? You didn't say that, but you see in his face, you looked at him like, you don't argue with me. Yes, sir, Sarge. I'm Cosme walks him down the staircase. He's walking behind me. I know that's yours. I said it's not mine. Remember now, I've got two knives. They're in the cell. Your dumb ass didn't find them. I know that's yours. It's not mine. Oh, it's yours. Don't worry about it. We'll be back. Next time, you ain't going to get out of it. Your ass going, Williams. You're going up to the mountains. You're getting up out of my pod. But I don't even be bothering you, man. I don't do nothing to you. Getting a lot of notes, man. You're always doing something. You slick. We ain't caught you yet. We're going to catch it. When we catch it, you're gone. Try to put street charges on you. I know that's yours. Do you really think that's mine, man? Did you see what you found? It's not sharp. It's covered in dust. It's an area I can't reach. Stupid. That's all right. I'll be back. They came back. But while all he did in telling me they would be back was let me know. Don't hold nothing. Go to the hold, hold down man. Give him everything. Hey, I'm going to give you a couple of soups, a couple of bags of chips, a couple of sodas, and you go hold my stuff for me. If I need it, I'll come by and get it. If I don't need it, you just hold it. Cool, Jay. They shook me down to the point that they were like, we're just done. That officer ended up going to another building. And he didn't catch me with shit. He was famous for catching guys because he was one of those guys that peek out the blinds. One of them guys that's nosy. One of the guys in everybody else's business, he was one of them dudes. One of them guys that had no life at home, probably got beat up by his wife. Shopped at the Goodwill because he only made $9 an hour. And ain't nothing wrong with the Goodwill. But he's one of them dudes. Broke as a bitch. Probably smoked Reggie. Generic cigarettes. Drove a car that somebody gave him because they felt sorry for him. And he come to prison trying to make my life a living hell. Nice try. Wrong guy. Wasn't my knife. If you would have looked in the, <laughs> you'd have found two knives. And I hope you're watching this with your silly ass. Told myself, this is yours. Nah, bitch, it's yours. Now nah, I really do got a knife. I just use it for work, but I do have a knife. Looking back on my time, the time I spent incarcerated, the years and years and years I spent inside of a cell, there's a lot I would do different, and there's a lot I would leave the same. First of all, I wouldn't have ever gotten incarcerated. Grown older now and I've learned from my mistakes. Selling the knives that was, even though I knew it led to people being hurt, it was part of my hustle. It was my means of survival. Not to mention, I like to make things. So I had made so many at one point that it was like, man, I can't get caught with all these knives. And a lot of times the guys that would buy these knives from me were guys that really needed them. Guys that were being victimized, terrorized, extorted. You know, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt, but I can't lie to you. It's not a bad feeling when you see the rabbit with the gun. It's not a bad feeling when you see somebody that's been being extorted or tormented or bullied or hurt. Finally have the upper hand and be able to do something about it. Not that I condone it, but I've seen it. And I remember how it felt. It's like, yeah, they're not going to mess with dude no more. There's a lot I would do different if I could go back. I'm not ever going back, but if I could go back in time, I'd do some things different. Just wanted to make that clear for y'all. Update on life. One of the trucks, the timing went, bent the valves. That's the 2006 F-150. I know I got Chevy fans, Dodge fans, Ford fans. I prefer to run F-150s for the jobs. So that truck is down and out of commission, put a new motor in it, bought another F-150, same color. It's 2002. Bought that the following day after the 06 went out. Truck runs like a champ, but it's a Ford. 
sort of eventually need the motor as well. The Hummer is now waiting on the third transfer case to come in. Two have come in. One did not fit. One they said looked like shit. So a third one will be in. They have had the Hummer for a very long time. Don't think that the Hummer's not coming back. Don't think I've abandoned the Hummer. Oh, man, he couldn't afford to fix that Hummer. All that's paid for. I'm just waiting on them to put the transfer case in. I'm also going to start the prison mystery box on the channel. Well, once a week, you're going to get an episode called The Mystery Box. But there's going to be different stories, all unrelated. And you're not going to know what they are, what the topic is, what it's about. It's the mystery box. Some stories you just can't put a name on and you just can't put in a category. And that's where the prison mystery box comes into play. So look out for the prison mystery box, which I think are going to be probably some of the best stories I've got. Some of the best stories I've got to tell y'all. That's what we're doing. It is Monday. As this video is rolled on, you see the snow is continuing to fall. Winter is amongst us. 2022 is here. And we're going to do what we do. We're going to continue to live life. Because y'all know this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And that's what we do around here. We live life no matter what. And that's what makes us lifers. That's what makes us real. And that's what draws y'all here. Is that no matter what, we push forward. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these facilities, these prisons, they're all just crazier world outside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Tug deputy doofy. You silly ass.